All right, I'm Dot from DotStrap.com, and today we're making some meatloaf. A very easy Italian meatloaf with wonderful tomato sauce. We're making it with Parmesan cheese built in and mozzarella on top. It is delicious, and most important, it's healthy and low carb. So come on and let's take a look at how we put this puppy together. I got my gloves on, so that means it's time to mix all the ingredients in the meatloaf. And the best way to do it is with your hands. Uh, and since I have a little, still a little cut on my little thumb, I'm just using gloves to protect me and also the food. But first, I'm going to let you know what's in the meatloaf. So I'm using extra lean ground beef, and I know that's a little bit odd for someone who's low carb, high fat. But what I find is when I, if I bake an 80-20 as opposed to meat that is 95% fat or fat-free versus 80% fat-free, it starts uh, adding a lot of liquid. And I don't really want to do that because then you're going to have to drain it off a couple of times. It ain't worth the hassle. So anyway, I'm using extra lean ground, ground beef. I'm using uh, cremori or brown mushrooms, just a few of them, about four of them, all diced up. I have some uh, mixed seasonings that I'm using here for like an Italian seasoning, and I'll put that information below the video. Two eggs, some sea salt, a roasted garlic clove. Oh, this is so yummy, and I can't, I just love doing this. And I'm going to have a recipe um, that I'll link to showing you how to make uh, roasted garlic. Also, I've got some diced onions, some of my tomato sauce that I make. I've got an extra batch of that because part of it's going to go on top. Got some mozzarella cheese, fresh mozzarella, which is going on top. But inside the meatloaf, I'm going to be mixing, whoops, sorry about the cling. Uh, I'm going to be mixing some grated Parmesan cheese. So with that, I'm going to get going on this. And I'm going to go ahead and add all the mushrooms. This is just going to be so yummy when I do that. All of my seasoning, just add that in here. Add the salt, the sea salt onions, add them all. I'm going to get my tomato sauce, two eggs. Now what's interesting, historically speaking, with the cheese, I'm using the cheese in place of uh, the grated Parmesan cheese in, in place of breadcrumbs. Now people think they have to add breadcrumbs to meatloaf with eggs. You don't. And the only reason why, historically speaking, eggs have been used, sort of like my grandmother in the Great Depression, she added eggs to meat, or um, breadcrumbs to meatloaf because she didn't have enough meat. She had eight kids and a husband. She had to make the food stretch, and that was one of the ways to make it stretch. And you just added eggs to help bind everything together with the breadcrumbs. Uh, the eggs help keep everything moist. The, eggs, the, egg, the um, breadcrumbs, the thinking was, it, it binded everything together and kept it moist. Didn't do it. It was all about stretching. I'm adding cheese specifically for flavoring. So, and it eggs, because it's protein. And also fat, yummy fat. And it does make it taste good and does add some moisture. The eggs do add moisture. So what I'm doing right now, I'm squeezing in the roasted garlic. That's the wonderful thing when you make roasted garlic. You can just squeeze it all in without getting any of the paper in from the garlic. So I'm going to put that away. So now I'm going to dig in with my hands. And I'm just going to start mixing everything together. Yum, right? <laughs> so let me go ahead. You want to make sure you mix it, but you don't want to over mix it. But you still want to mix everything really well. If anything, my marinara sauce is really going to add great flavor, or my tomato sauce, I should say. Um, it adds great flavor, and it also helps keep the meat moist so it doesn't get too harsh when you cook it. What I'm going to do now is get my, I'm doing a 5x9 baking uh, bread dish, bread pan, to put, to put the meatloaf in, and all you're going to do is pack it in. Want to make sure it's flat, there's no gaps. This, this will serve about eight people. I'm going to get all of that in. Don't lose that. And so I'm just going to, you want to flatten it out with your hand and spread it out as much as you can, but you just want to make sure it's level. That's basically is what I'm doing here. Now what it's going to do, it's going into the oven. The oven is preheated, preheated to 350. It's going to go in for about 
45 minutes. And when it comes out, at that point, I'm going to add my topping onto it, which is going to be a half cup of my tomato sauce and about a quarter cup of mozzarella. You can use shredded mozzarella. I'm using fresh mozzarella. It's going to go back into the oven once I do that to melt the cheese and just make more deliciousness. But right now, I'm going to get this puppy in the oven. All right, the meatloaf is out of the oven, but it is not done yet. Um, what you notice, if, if you look closely, um, the meatloaf is starting to pull away from the sides, which is what typically happens. Ground beef will shrink up because you have fat coming out of it. Um, it sort of um, renders the fat out. And what I've already done is when I took it out, the sides had a lot of liquid. So I went ahead, I took out the liquid. I just sort of tilted it as much as I could without the meatloaf falling out. We don't want that. Um, so just keep that in mind. You will, that's why I don't use 80-20 um, ground beef because of that liquid. It would overflow this puppy. Anyway, what I'm gonna do now is go ahead. I'm gonna take a half a cup of the marinara sauce and I'm just gonna spread it on top of the meatloaf. And you got some nice chunky tomatoes, but I'm just gonna spread it around. You wanna cover the top, basically, of your meatloaf. Someone is calling me. <laughs> anyway, done that. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm taking some my fresh mozzarella and I'm just gonna put it on top. And I'm gonna, it's gonna melt. So I got some extra pieces, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put it on here. I'm gonna break this one. It's also a disc, I'm gonna break it in half. So you really are gonna cook this now for another 30 minutes. When this is done, you want the internal temperature of the meat to be roughly 160, 165 degrees. But what'll happen, the cheese will be melted. It'll be a nice brownish color. Um, it'll be wonderful. And then it's ready to go ahead and eat right out of the oven. You do want to let it rest for about 10 minutes before you start serving it. But what I'm going to do now is get my oven mitts on. This is hot. I don't want to touch it. And I'm going to put it back in the oven for 30 minutes. All right, the meatloaf is done. It hit the internal temperature of 165. We are all set with this. I'm going to let it rest for about 10 minutes. And as you can see, there's a little bit more liquid in there, again, coming off the meat. I'm going to drain it one more time, gently. I don't want to disrupt and have anything like cheese slide off. That's just too valuable. Uh, but I'm going to drain it again. Um, this thing slides around, so it's really easy to take out of the dish. Just get yourself a spatula that you can sort of wedge underneath and you can lift it out, but definitely let it cool first before you touch it or you attempt it. You can also just sli you know, slice it in your pan if you'd like to. This is actually, I'm making this for my mother. So I am going to slide it out and when it's all cooled down and wrap it up for her. But otherwise, it's a tasty meal that is uh, low in carb, great amount of fat in there and also good proteins too, but it's a nice healthy meal because it's made with real ingredients. That's the most important thing. So if you like what you see, click on the thumbs up, go ahead and hit subscribe and also share with your friends if you'd like, and I will see you next time.